your best memory from high school? Story 1. I went to high school in a small town, graduating class of 67 people. I was pretty flipping nerdy and had two friends. I didn't have a car, no money, and I wasn't particularly attractive. Every weekend, my two friends and I would go to someone's house, and we would alternate between playing Mario Kart N64 all night while eating Peanut Mamp M's and drinking Memph San. Do, or playing Settlers of Catan and watching Star Trek, or MST3K or TNG, while eating Peanut Mamp M's and drinking MSCN. Do! I would ride my bike from one friend's house to another on the weekends, hauling either my N64 or a bunch of snacks and soda, and we would pretty much just stay up all night, playing games, and lord the nerdy talk we would engage in. I went on to have some fun times in college and break out of my shell later in life. But those years in high school with those two guys will always remind me that being content and having joy in life will never be about obtaining what you think you need, but just enjoying the time you have with the friends you have and being present. Story 2 my name sounds like that of the North Korean leader, so my friends started calling me Kim Jong-Joon, the glorious leader. Then one guy made a picture of my face photoshopped on Kim leading the North Korean army, and another one with me, Lenin, and Jesus. He then posted these pictures all over school. This was when I was running for school treasurer, so I immediately got taken out of the running because it put a bad image for the school good times. Story 3. In my second semester of senior year, we sent mass texts to everyone in our contacts list, trying to organize a water brawl or a water balloon water gun fight. Now, any sort of toy or plastic gun was prohibited at this point after all those school shootings, but that didn't stop anyone from walking in with super soakers in their backpacks. This was supposed to be a senior prank in a sense, but all the grade levels caught wind of it and brought in water balloons, water guns, etc. We had an all-out epic water battle that lasted about 10 minutes and ended with the Dean driving his go-kart into the middle of the brawl in attempts to stop it, getting hit in the head with a Gatorade bottle and lunch being short. Many detention slips were handed out on that day, and I still have my slip notated reason for detention. Throwing water. Edit. OP delivers. In order to graduate on stage and walk, we had to have all detention hours cleared by the day before the ceremony. Conveniently, I had two hours of detention to do by the last day, and we were only allowed to do one hour at a time. Luckily, they allowed me to do paper pickup to clear my remaining hours. The only part of the school that didn't have security cameras was an area we called the orchard that had like three orange trees, Li Mao. So me and my buddy spent the whole hour there throwing our shoes at the oranges to knock them off the tree so we could eat them. Didn't pick up one piece of trash that day. Story 4. Our high school football coach was also my math teacher and a total, total stereotype of the jockish teacher who just never wanted to leave high school. For our homecoming pep rally my senior year, he wanted to drive a limo into gym and have a bunch of football players pile out of the limo to mow money, mow problems. Despite being the lamest cow anyone could imagine, I pointed out that the gym doors were pretty narrow and it would be tough to drive a limo through there. He assured me I had no idea what I was talking about and made a point to remind me he was a geometry teacher and knew all about the proper angles he needed to take to get the limo into the door safely. To the pep rally, with Mace and Puff Daddy blaring through the speakers, he starts to drive the limo through the gym doors and it is obvious it's not going to fit. He backs up and tries a couple times, then finally gets it lined up and drives through, screeching, crunching of metal. He gets the limo halfway through the door and then stops, jumps out, and throws his hands up in the air while turning bright red. The football players were stuck and had to climb out the sunroof and never got to make their big entrance. I was about 10 feet away and I know he could see me the whole time doing a slow clap as it sunk in what he had done. Ended up costing thousands in damages and the doorframe had to be removed to get it out. I ended up getting a D in his class and had to make up the credit in summer school, but it really was my favorite moment of high school. Story 5. Boarding School. Accidentally ordered 300 Hawaiian baby woodrose seeds instead of 30. Took 8 of them with some friends in my dorm room, figuring whatever will just hang on to the rest. I'm sure we'll want them again at some point. After a few hours and a massive stomach ache, we all wrote it off as not happening. I was on the phone with my girlfriend arguing about some dumb cow when it finally happened. I hardly remember where our argument went, but it got resolved in what seemed like half a second. 
I felt super happy. She told me she loved me. I either imagined or hallucinated seeing a Red Baron-style airplane, piloted by the Wendy's girl, do a loop-de-loop -loop across my vision. I got her off the phone and stood up. My legs felt like jelly. The door burst open and I see my friend, who ordered them, standing in the doorway, all wide-eyed. Hey guys, he yells, leaning against the door frame. Yup! Every Friday night you have to check in with a teacher. In the cafeteria between 6 and 8 p.m. 7.30 rolls around and we're peeking really hard. Our plan was to act really goofy because trying to hold it together would only be more suspicious. I put on some ski goggles and a sombrero. My friends wore bandanas, Halloween nonsense and all sorts of dumb cow. We get to the cafeteria and pretty much everyone is wearing sunglasses, ski goggles, ski helmets, cowboy hats, wacky pajamas, etc. Apparently, while I was on the phone with my girlfriend, the dude who ordered the seeds sold some to a really popular girl. All her friends were on board, and the news spread like wildfire. He unloaded all 300 seeds in about two hours, and everyone was rolling. I talked to the teacher at the check-in table, and she's all happy, saying, It's so great! Everyone is in such a good mood. People were wandering around campus all night, tripping. It was really fun. Everyone was outside staring at cow and talking to one another, and it really brought the class together. Story 6. The brotherhood-type friendship I had with my two best friends. We used to hang out in my 1920s built single-car garage. Got a bunch of couches and cow and had sleepovers all the time. We would stay up all night doing stupid cow, drinking Matt Dew, eating unhealthy food, running around our small town in the middle of the night. It was so free. I had a candy-addicted father and a mother supporting two kids and a pain-pill-addict husband, so she was never very much in a good mood. But me and my friends would get together, the cow, listen to music, talk about girls, and just forget everyone and everything. Love those dudes, but adulthood happened and now we don't see each other as much. Story 7. I went to a Catholic school and I'm a legs man. By senior year, all the slutty girls kept their original skirts so by that time they were mid-thigh. All I remember from high school was legs, legs, legs. I had a girlfriend junior year who would ride me on the toilet. Oh, yeah, I won a bunch of tournaments in wrestling and got some awards. But legs, man. Story 8. I went to a small American high school in Europe and generally enjoyed all of it. Perhaps the best part was when I got a key to a spare portable classroom that we were able to use as a love shack party place for the rest of the year. We were doing senior pictures and I was the last kid to go. The photographer was in a hurry to get home after I was done, and the rest of the school, students and faculty, were gone for the day. He gave me the key and asked me to drop it off on Monday when we I came to school. Well, that weekend we used the room to hang out hookup, and come Monday I just forgot about the key. No one ever asked about it, and I just held on to it for the rest of the year. No more sneaking about in the woods looking for a place to hook up in the winter. No more freezing while drinking. We did a good job of cleaning up after ourselves and never got caught. Story 9. Oh man, senior year was a blast. I feel like I have a story for every day. But here's probably my fave. The year before, all of my friends were talking about how they had just bought their ACL tickets. I'm from Austin, Texas. ACL is a big music festival that happens downtown. None of us had ever gone do it was a big deal. Everyone was finally getting to go. I was upset because my parents wouldn't buy me tickets, so there was no way I could really go. I had never had a job and wasn't old enough to drive. Then one day, my Spanish teacher went off about how excited she was that she had just bought her ACL tickets, and I got mad. So I bucked up, got myself a job, had my friends and family drive to and from every shift. Spent my entire first paycheck to buy my ticket. So that was summer. Now in senior year, it's ACL weekend. Fry sat. So it's Friday, I'm sitting in physics class, which was my second class of the day, and I get a text from a friend. Hey man, we're gonna go ahead and head downtown. I freaked out all my friends were going to go without me and I was going to be stuck until 4 before I could get down there. But I said no, raised my hand, asked to go to the bathroom, and then ran off to Zilker Park and spent the rest of the day at a music festival. Story 10 was in the science blocks with one of my friends. He told me to pull his finger. I saw the teacher standing behind him. He didn't. I proceeded to pull. Whilst his right leg lifted high into the air, he yelled victory fart and let rip. I was on the floor, roaring with laughter, and when he realized I'd never seen anyone run so fast. Story 11. I was a band kid. I will never forget the amount of ridiculous yet immensely fun things we did. It was probably the only social circle in which I truly felt that I belonged. Sure, we were crazy, but it was a source of light in a tunnel that was often dark. Oh, and meeting my best friend.
That's something I'll always cherish, even though distance has gotten the best of us. Story 12. I was really, really shy freshman through junior year and had some friends here and there, but I was super lonely on the weekends with nothing to do. I decided I would run for senior class officer at the end of junior year, and somehow I won and beat out people that have been class officers their entire high school career. When they announced my name was probably the best memory. It didn't mean much, but it felt good. Ten years later and I flipping hate it because now I have to be in charge of reunions. Story 13 the end when everyone forgot the four years that came before and acted nice to everyone else. Beefs were quashed on the spot. Anyone labeled nerd was cool. It was just an amazing feeling unifying once we were grads, even with the people who didn't like you. I, like many people, have some funny and serious stories, but this topped it all. There is no better feeling than having someone who criticized you throughout the year sneak up behind you to hug you and wish you luck in the future, even if it was just for one day. Story 14 this is a long one, but makes me smile. My junior year, my NJROTC class had to go to an overnight drill meet in another town. I was the highest ranked female officer there, so I was in charge of one of the female rooms. I'm not even sure why they trust me with being in charge of other humans, but whatever. It ended up pretty funny. After a day of drilling and whatnot, I was tired as fudge and told everyone to go back to their own rooms because the girls in mine were about to go to sleep. It was 11. Had to be up at 5. Lights out was supposed to be at 10. They all left, except two who asked to crash with us since their room leader didn't care. I fell asleep and about 5 minutes later hear shrieking. They somehow made the coffee candy fudge up and it was erupting coffee all over the walls and floor. I dove out of bed and yanked it out of the wall, kicked open the bathroom door. Best friend was showering inside, she also started freaking out, and threw it into the sink. No one knew what the fudge happened. Everything was set up right on the coffee maker, so it shouldn't have blown up. The girls still wanted coffee, so my best friend and I sneak past the CO's hotel room and down to the lobby to get everyone some, because it was obvious no one was sleeping tonight. On the way back, we saw the CO doing rounds to check for people sneaking out and hid, Scooby-Doo style, behind a partition. He walked past and back into his room, and we went up to the next floor to get to ours. Rounding the corner, we come face to face with a guy in a hoodie, hood covering his face. We scooch past and say, excuse me, and he starts following us. We speed up, he speeds up a lot, so we sprint into our room and close the door, locking it. I look out and he's hanging around a bit down the hallway, so I tell everyone no one else is leaving at all. We slept for maybe an hour total before CO called to make sure we were awake. The meat sucked. Marching on ice when you're from a state that ever sees cold is a bad person. And we all got food poisoning from the hotel, but it was fun. The unit did get charged $110 for that coffee maker, though. Either that memory or my abusive ex entering the spiral staircase to find me making out with the new guy I was dating. He heard someone down below and made a wolf whistle. Everyone in ROTC used these stairs and rounded the corner with the girl he cheated on me with and her new boyfriend. I laughed and said good morning. Story 15. The times I made the whole class laugh. Consider that up until the last two years of high school, I had severe social anxiety, had no friends in class, and felt like cow every day. This made it feel extra good. Note, the times I made the class laugh only happened in the last two years, just saying that to avoid confusion. In these last two years, I actually felt like I was a part of something, and I had never had that feeling before. I miss it. Story 16 my friends and I took a couch off the street, walked it right in through the front doors of the school, and hid it in out club room. Never once got in trouble, and the last time I looked, it's still there today. Oh yeah, we also convinced one of our teachers to take us on a pointless field trip because we were bored. Story 17. I was fortunate enough to have a high school radio station, and all my best memories somehow linked to that radio station. I did sports broadcasting, even though I wasn't a sports fan, so that mostly consisted of playing video games on my friend's laptop while we waited for half time. Also did a lot of voice acting with one of my other friends, and we just had a blast, because nothing's more entertaining than screaming like you're a pimp at your friend who's acting like she's some kind of hooker. Aaron's altitude that friend to a rave, and that was fun as cow. A good part of my high school consisted of just being around the coolest people I've ever met. I try not to think of all the people I met. Story 18. I was the guy that did all the sound for school musicals and band concerts and assemblies. The summer between my junior and senior year, some senior friends were having a graduation party and had a band that wanted to play. 
Unfortunately, nobody had gear. I was in driver's ed at the time, so I was in the school building during the day. I rigged a door by the auditorium so that it wouldn't latch, and came back with a friend that evening. We loaded all the sound gear in his pickup truck and set it up in a barn for the party. We brought it all back that night except it had a bunch of hay on it from the barn. It turns out the school had cameras, so they figured out what we did. My punishment was to be told, don't do that again. The friend with the truck had graduated, so I don't know if he even knew that we got busted. Story 19. When I came back from a torn Labral my senior year, I had to fight my way back onto my swim team and show them I could do better than I had my junior despite the injury. I not only beat the kid who took my spot in breaststroke, but went on to districts where I beat him and the kid seeded above me. I got third in the second to last heat of breaststroke and my team took home the district's trophy, which we had failed to do a few years prior. Story 20. Going to state in tennis. My best friend and I had joined the tennis team the year before, just on a whim from playing in gym class. Lost every single match that year, practiced all summer and came back blasting. Ended up qualifying by beating our crosstown rivals who had beat us earlier in the year. Won doubles. Went in not really expected to do a lot, but were the big spoilers. We beat a couple undefeated teams and made it to round of eight. Ended up losing, but it was super close. Six. Four four. Six seven. Six tiebreaker. Has a huge crowd and a bunch of people cheering for us being the big time underdogs. Didn't even care that we lost though. Had a blast and met some cool people. Story 21. The entire theatre program had around 50, 60 people, and there was only one teacher. We could literally get away with anything. My best memories had been sitting in the dimly lit catwalks under this huge AC with a bunch of people eating pizza. We would then play dueling pianos using these massive Baldwins. Story 22. I went to an all-boy military high school, so we were always a bit off. During the second to last week of school, my senior year tensions were running high, with us pulling pranks and being general assholes while the faculty attempted to keep us from breaking anything we could get our hands on. During a lunch period on that fateful day, one of guys in my class stood up. We all turned around and looked at him with our phones out. He proceeded to fully deep throat a breakfast sausage, which led to all of us erupting into a loud chorus of screams and chants as faculty ran down, thinking we had just sacrificed a student. High school had its poor moments, but I sure don't regret going to mine. Story 23. Watching a former bully of mine get his in the end. He said something distasteful and vulgar about another student's mother who was in treatment for cancer. The student went ape-cow crazy and beat the living pour out the water out of the bully. The school had to call the paramedics, and the bully was taken to the hospital. I was in the hallway when it occurred, and I remember the teachers pulling the student off the bully who was lying on the ground with blood all over. The dean even mumbled about time. The bully was just the worst you could possibly imagine as a bully. Don't know anyone who knew who him felt bad about getting the nonsense kicked out of him. Story 24. When I met my first love, we were not productive together, but we had so much fun. Skipping school, exploring the city, listening to music and making love. We had a very devastating breakup when my family moved us across the country. There were a few instances of both of us ran away to be together, but we never saw each other again after the move. We both bought bus tickets two times and got caught in different states. I ended up in a lockdown facility due to running away, depression, and candy use. But it was all worth it. Story 25. I had really bad acne my junior year of high school. Up until then, things had been manageable, but that year my acne was completely out of control. Eventually, I was prescribed some kind of steroid to control my breakouts, which took several months to see any kind of improvement. However... After the treatment had ran its course, my skin was smooth. There was no scarring, nothing. I remember going to the bathroom in between classes one day. And as I left, I caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror. And for the first time in well over a year, I just remember feeling so flipping happy and confident in myself. I just stood there and smiled to the point I almost wanted to cry I was so happy. I have many great memories of high school, but I will perfectly remember this moment forever. Story 26 my senior ditch day that involved an unplanned airplane flight and an emergency landing. My friend had his pilot's license and access to a general aviation type air and asked if I wanted to fly to Palm Springs from San Diego with him and two other friends. Me being the responsible young man, I said no since it was so last minute and I'd have no alibi. I got into the car they were leaving in to head to say goodbye and they more or less decided they were going to kidnap me. 
I spent the ride with my head in my hands and fretting about how this was going to land me in a lot of trouble. During the ride, I committed to the plan and gave my parents a call about how I'd be out late studying. Foolproof! We gassed up the plane just like a car and set our heading for Palm Springs. Flying through the air with your best mates is one of the most cherished experiences I'll ever have even if it was with the looming threat of the guy next to me getting airsick. Palm Springs was our playground, but we were good kids, so no mischief was manufactured, and we had a blast. The return flight was the crazy part. Basically, low clouds had moved in, blocking our return from the desert and generally mucking up our plans. So we had two options. Fly through the cloud-filled canyons and risk our lives, my friend was not instrument rated, or confess to our parents and get a ride back. Luckily, cooler heads prevailed and we chose to put down in the desert east of the mountains. That landing was insane. We faked an instrument malfunction and radioed we were going to land at a private airstrip nearby. The wind was blowing in the desert that day, and it resulted in a wild headwind on our landing approach, causing the plane to twist dive randomly on our way down. My friend's skill saw us safely to the ground and we locked up the plane. As luck would have it, a nearby resident saw us put down and was nice enough to give us a ride into the desert town of Ocotillo. My pilot friend called his mom for a ride, and we grabbed a bite to eat at the local bar. She was quite unaware of the trip and was fuming when she arrived. We won her over with the argument. Hey, at least we didn't risk dying to hide all this. And she cooled off. But that was still an awful ride back to San Diego with the four of us crammed into her Passat. My parents didn't find out for eight more years. Story 27 not a single memory, but a series of them. I miss riding with my friends in old cars listening to loud music as we drove on the highway. You just feel so infinite and in that you can accomplish anything. Especially senior year, I always felt like I was just on the cusp of bigger and better things that I didn't even realize the value in what was already in front of me. Story 28. I put this in another thread, but I love telling this story so. In high school, in lieu of a school-sanctioned senior prank, which we were denied because we did senior skip day against the administration's wishes, I decided to do a prank of my own by filling about 200 plus books in the library with images that I had out of multiple prohibited photos rags. No one ever caught me, and because only one image would be found at a time, people didn't realize it was an epidemic until a bunch of freshmen checked out Edgar Allan Poe anthologies and discovered donkey shows and gangbangs in everyone. Since the pictures were only discovered after I left, a massive witch hunt went down where a nonsense ton of people were accused, but no one was caught. It's honestly the proudest moment of my high school career. Story 29. I was pretty nerdy. World of Warcraft, Starcraft, Dota and Warhammer were my biggest interests. I played guitar too, so that went towards being cool. But for the most part, I hid it well apart from with my one other really nerdy friend. We used to play Pathfinder, like Dungeons and Dragons, together, every few sessions alternating who made the story for the other one. There were a lot of important NPCs, but one day, my friend runs towards me and says something like, You know Tyler and Mike. They know we play Pathfinder together, and I was like, Oh, cow how, because I was ready to be really embarrassed about it. But he quickly said, No, 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 they want to play too. My face must have lit up. It certainly felt like it. My friend made a campaign for us and we played together for ages. Story 30. Honors Chemistry. Teacher taught us all the components of stoiciometry without us knowing that's what it's called. After learning the concepts and having cheat sheets, he let us lose in the lab to make our own experiment with a given list of chemicals. So connecting the dots, I started doing the math, since the chemicals that would react were right on the reactivity sheet. I looked around to see, and over here everyone confused and mixing said chemicals 50-50 by weight. I even had to fight my own group that it made no sense to do that, when we had just been taught all this stuff. We had a week to do this lab, the first two days I spent tracking down math errors, for which the teacher was helped. He didn't realize what was going on until Thursday, that groups weren't doing it right at all. He assumed that my group wasn't helping me and freeloading. While that was partially true, it was because I was the only one following the expectation he had. Now it ended as you would think, but what this was for me was validation. That when it came time to apply knowledge, I had that skill in a system that relies so heavily on memorization. Story 31. Every year, the 12th grade government classes would hold a mock democratic national convention. The teachers would assign you to a group, give the group a topic platform, and the group would research the topic before debating on stage at the convention. 
This was 1992, so the teacher assigned my group the Convoy Rights Platform. There was no Pro-Boy Rights Platform assigned. I told the teacher that was nonsense and that I was changing our platform to Pro. The rest of the kids no longer wanted to participate, so I did all the research myself. Then I got up in front of my entire school in my Kmart suit and rocked the cow out of my speech. Despite the fact that the kids kept calling me Dyke in the weeks leading up to the event, and one shower bag I had known since kindergarten actually used the Adam and Steve line during direct questions, I won by a majority vote. We had students assigned as pages who would run notes up and down the aisles during debates. After I won, I sat down and a page handed me a note that just said, Thank you. I think that is probably still the proudest day of my life, and I'm 42 now. Story 32 an epic lunchroom brawl. The quiet kid in my school was very average looking, completely forgettable. He mostly flew under the radar, but once a group of bullies, six IIRC, started harassing him. This continued for a few weeks until one day in the lunchroom, he snapped. He broke a lunch tray over the ringleader's head, took a plastic cup of milk, and threw it in another's face before shooting a sick elbow to his nose. He grabbed a fork off the table and stabbed one thug's hand as he was going for a force palm. He grabbed that guy and threw him onto another guy. He then grabbed one of the remaining bully's heads and slammed it into the table. The last guy ran off. They left him alone after that. Story 33 On graduation day, a school-sponsored party has held at a local arcade. The entire place was rented out. We were given unlimited money for the games. It was all hours from 11 p.m. to 8 a.m. There was a coffee bar, a buffet, and almost my entire graduating class. Towards the end of the night, a hypnotist showed up and put on a fantastic show where all the volunteers were people I had known for years, so there was no way they were plants. At one point, he told them to start dancing, and one conservative, religious good girl started twerking with immaculate form, and the room just erupted in noise. He convinced one girl that the number seven no longer existed, and when she tried to count, she almost started to cry. Story 34 it's got to be the time when me and about 50 other guys in the senior class dressed in cut-off t-shirts, miniskirts, and fishnets at our big rivalry basketball game. We did a choreographed dance to Dude Looks Like a Lady in front of 2,000 of our best friends and the horrified parents of the Catholic school down the road. The grand finale was going into the splits and failing horribly. Loudest crowd I've ever been in front of and easily the most memorable moment of senior year. Story 35 my best high school memory. I remember waking up the very first day of my junior year. I felt so good, so incredibly good, that decades later I still recall it and the details of waking up that morning right down to combing my hair. I've never felt that good before or since. Energy to burn, nothing hurt, no stiffness, a great feeling of optimism and anticipation, it all just came together, I guess. I'd probably have to take some kind of sweets to get that feeling again. Yeah, I had close relationship, had some great parties with friends, tons of laughs. But that moment of incredible well-being, it's the first thing that pops to mind.